Hello and welcome to A Matter of Fact, a weekly podcast that is to QI what Sharknado 2 is to Jaws. With me this week I have Dave Cordingly Hello. and Laura Stevens. Hey. And I'm your host, Kirby Rawston. The game is simple. Each week there is a different topic consisting of five rounds, each with its own theme. We've all spent the week researching and have brought our favourite facts to tell the others. Whoever has the most popular fact wins a point, and whoever gets the best out of five is the overall winner. For this episode, the last in our first series, the topic is free for all, pertaining to anything. And first up, we have Dave. Okay, so my fact is about facts, or rather about factoids. The difference between a fact and a factoid is that a fact is something that's proven and checked. Uh, a factoid is an item of unreliable information that is reported and repeated so often that it becomes accepted as a fact. For example, goldfish have three second memories, or sharks do not get cancer, and we only use 10% of our brains. Despite us knowing many of these to be facts, they're just not true. Goldfishes have memories more in the order of three months, sharks are particularly prone to skin cancer, and the amount of the brain activity is dependent on the complexity of the task. This 10% could be linked to, I don't know, um, the amount of neurons required passively, and that's just to control background. Homeostasis. Or, yeah, organ regulation, that kind of jazz. That's my Someone learned a new death. one this week, didn't they? Yeah. You've used that twice now. No, 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 good, good. Uh, other brain related factoids that we need to stop saying are there is no such thing as the left or right brain. Uh, no correlation exists from one side of the brain to be for specific traits, which is the same thing as saying people saying. So it's not left brain RT, right brain maths. It's... No science backs that up. Mm -hmm. Same way uh, male and female brains don't actually differ. It's all how we've trained ourselves mm. as each individual. But there is scientific <clears throat> fact about if you have a deviation between the uh, both of the separate craniums. Um, you... Then you're going to be a bit of a gimp. <laughs> no, no, um, no. Split, splitting the central neocortex, I think that's the right part, is um, a, a potential cure for seizures. Yes, um, but it also it basically separates your brain from knowing what the other side's doing. Yeah. So it can calm that bit down, but from the exact same point of view, it can stop you from knowing what the other side of your brain is doing. Not to the extent that you don't know things or whatever, it's just more to the fact that you just can't cross-relate the it, information. It, it was, I've seen some tests on this, like someone covering one side of the eye and then asked to manipulate or match what's going on in one eye to the hand motion of the opposing eye. Can't do it. If you've had that section cut, you cannot, you, that side of your brain that's the, uh, taking in your visual data, hmm. processes it, and then can't it pass it to the it other to side. Hmm. So the other side of your brain can't say, go for the apple, because that's what he's looking at. Something else that will make this room pretty happy is booze does not kill brain cells. <laughs> yep. Yep. Everyone's Cheers. Pretty happy. <laughs> Cheers. Drink along at home. Unless you're in a car, in which case, don't. Yeah, Luke, drink don't twice. Drink along at home. <laughs> The killing brain cells thing comes from extreme um, alcoholism, and that's when most of your calorie intake is coming from the booze, when it should be coming from the food. Oh, so you don't have the nutrients to replace the things that you'd be... Precisely. So it's not just killing your brain, it's killing all the other yeah. bits as well. Yeah. My absolute most hated factoid is that vaccines do not cause autism. Vaccinations do not cause it. So don't you mean your most annoying factoid is that facts things cause autism? Because it's I, I, said so often, I, I, it's I a double remember. negative. Um. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I'm confused. Hang on. So I thought they didn't. They no, don't. They don't. Good. They that's don't. what I thought. But Someone it, made it up. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I remember uh, this. A, a study was conducted and it had its data manipulated, uh, causing this stupid factoid. It's since been uh, reconducted several times and shown empirically that there is no link. Yeah. Vaccinate your kids. It's that simple. Well, I heard the um, the obvious argument that you kind of don't really think about that even if it did cause autism, and there was like there was said to be a one in fifty thousand chance or something like that, you're still more willing to give to risk your kid being 
at risk to any number of these life-threatening diseases than mm. potentially have a kid with learning disabilities and a mental or a mental disability. You know, something's a bit different. Well, it's not just that. It's that it, these vaccines work mm. against um, <coughs> polio and yeah. the rest of it. All, all this jazz. If there are people who are not vaccinated, they are a breeding ground, not just for the these uh, diseases and um, problems, but it's it gives these viruses and such somewhere to m- mutate mm. and thus puts everyone else at risk, thus making the whole process of vaccinating people pointless. Cool. All right. Good fact there. Uh, or lack of fact, depending. Um, Laura, you're up next. So, I guess a lot of people think, this might class as a fact word, that most people think that their taste buds are all on their tongue. They're not. Dum, dum, dum. They are also, well, taste buds can also be found on the roof of your mouth, and also to a lesser extent, the lips, cheeks, and back of the mouth. Mm. Now, the various different taste sensations that you have on your tongue, you've got sweetness and salty towards the front. Yes. Factoid. Oh, oh no, it, not this, the came, t- this came up in mine. Okay. The, the tongue map, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a complete fallacy. That's why you get all of your ulcers towards the top, um, front of your mouth, though. It's not true, though. You don't have different taste buds that pick up different, not different areas. All the taste okay, buds. Okay, scrap this then. Okay, but yeah, You're no, no. lying. No, no, it's on QI and everything. I because I, I was about to do that whole joke, you know, about oh, and at the front you have forgotten names, you know, on the tip of your tongue. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's not a thing. Sorry. Fine. My research today. Ah. My research on the bus here. <laughs> Right. She, was, she was actually outside for like an hour. Yeah, I was going to say, this is why it takes a long time. It's just on the bus in circles. Anyway, yeah. so you do have taste buds on the roof of your mouth, mm. side of your mouth, and lips. And so it's just a case of you, these start to die off as we age. We generally have about 10,000 taste buds um, around our mouth, let's say that, because of the different regions. But as we age, that can start to decrease down to between 2,000 to the 5,000 range. Um, that so that's why grannies always have those horrible lamps, because they've got no taste. No, bro. Oh, I couldn't help it. Continue. Um, that left a bit of taste in my mouth. <laughs> but where? <laughs> um, <laughs> as the number of taste buds decrease, so does the sensitivity to certain types of food. That means that certain types of food that was once considered too strong when a person was younger may be more palatable now as you age. So people are more likely to like red wine as they're older? Red wine, spicier foods, Hmm. broccoli for its bitterness, all of those sorts of things. Your your taste buds have basically decreased, as it were. Um, So that might explain a few bits and pieces, because if you're a newborn and you're told to eat your broccoli and it's because... That's really yeah, bitter. Yeah, tastes, yeah, it tastes um, terrible. And then as you age and the rest of it, maybe put it in, I don't know, a cheese sauce. <laughs> it's not so bad. Yeah, it's um, broccoli in a cheese sauce. It's good. I've done that one. It's good. Mm. It's certainly been. Oh, I like the old cauliflower cheese. So. Oh, no, I love a bit of cauliflower. I've never, never been a fan. But if you don't overcook it, if you slightly undercook it and then cauliflower cheese, it tastes amazing. It still um, tastes like cauliflower. Mm. My mum does um, sweet corn in cheese sauce. Or and sometimes we have sweet corn, broccoli, and cheese sauce. Just anything in cheese sauce. I think yeah. cheese sauce might be the key. <laughs> it, 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 it's one of the magic ingredients. That and you know, the, there were three. I can't remember the third. Cheese sauce, cheese, sperm. Um, much less sperm. <laughs> There's actually a cookbook. Have you seen this? Cooking with cheese. You can get cooking with cooking. Yeah, you can actually get cooking with with sperm. A cookbook for um, it's on Amazon. I don't require this as a book ever in my repertoire of cookery. Why have you already mastered it? <laughs> I think you find it. I'm not coming to your dinner parties ever again. No girdle buster pie for Kirby. Not with spunk in it, no. Anyway, the final part of my fact, or it may be a factoid, I'm not sure anymore, is that females generally have more taste buds than men overall. I believe that's true, but again, I don't know if it's one of those things that's commonly held as true or not. Any thoughts? I cross-referenced five different websites for that one, so... 
I'm just trying to remember whether or not the the piece of information that's been floating through my head is true. And I think you're missing a place where we have taste buds. The rectum. I think I've heard that yeah. as well. Yeah. Wow, it's on the incest. Yeah. It? Our ass has the ability to taste, hmm. which it just seems fucking bizarre. It's the whole thing of your brain in your stomach thing, because your brain is a separate cognitive entity down there, your gut, it's more specifically in your stomach. So it would make sense if it did have an ability to taste things, which maybe doesn't even register to you, I don't know. It could simply date back from you know, you know, this idea that if you call anyone an arsehole, you're correct, because it, I've forgotten the technical uh, spot for this, but when we're before proto oh, the first thing you start as yeah. is an arsehole. We, 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 we start life as arseholes. And then you build the rest of it. Tube. Well, it's why you have that little gap down the middle, like various different parts of you, like that are left of where you finish forming. Like the middle of your nose is one of them. For guys, it's the old testicles. Um, for women, it's the more obvious scrotum. divide. If, huh? if your testicles are joined together with a small line, there's something wrong. Yes, that's a good <laughs> usage. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, no, yeah, the, the older. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Sack. Yep. Cool. Cool. All right. Nice fact. Thank you. Okay. I'm up next. Go team. Woo! Uh, so, my fact is that there is a sea creature that actually eats its own brain. And that, that's exactly the response I wanted from I, shocked amazement. I like this. Continue. Its own or... Its, its own brain. Okay. It, it absorbs its own brain. It, say it eats it like... Oh, no, isn't it? It's kind so of like, so we're, we're, we're hinting towards the, the kind of starfish Yes. That kind of thing. It's called a sea squirt and it is part of the tunicates group. Yeah, no, no, sea squirt. It's one of the, you know, the whole thing where someone will uh, approach something in a rock pool and then it will squirt them in the face. That whole kind of cloister Pokemon type, you know, squirt of jet water. Sorry, the hand motions are not helping my mental imagery here. <laughs> Do you guys know this? <laughs> it's right out the beach is a lot I don't. But no, no, no. But, they're, but they're, basically, this is a, a creature that's commonly found in rock pools and things like that. When I say creature, it's kind of on the same creature as a barnacle kind of level uh, of creature. Uh, it's hermaphroditic, which is uh, always a great way to be. And it releases both sperm and eggs into the water in order to reproduce. What is conceived turns into a kind of tadpole-like larvae which is capable of swimming short distances, but not feeding. So it can swim, but it can't eat. After it kind of gets tired, it will fall to the bottom of whatever pool or seabed it's in, and it will start by affixing itself to the rock or the seabed of wherever it is. It will then develop kind of an in and out system for seawater involving food and nutrients and oxygen. So like a filtration. Yeah, so a filtration device, and it replaces its gills with that. It then absorbs its tail, and its last step before becoming completely kind of, not quite plant-esque, but basically plant-esque, it will absor absorb its own brain. Nice. And then it keeps doing what it does, plantish style, until it decides to spunk in the air again. Fantastic. Yeah. I, th I think that's quite cool. I just like that there's something that eats its own brain yeah. as part of its life cycle. A, a motive creature that then becomes static. Yeah. That, yeah, like you said, goes, well, I don't need this. This is, this is nutrients. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. But like it, it. it's one of those things. It's um, it's called the sea squirt because people, like small children and, and things, will often go and just poke it in a rock pool and it will squirt a jet of water at them. And it can target. So that's quite cool as well. Nice. Cool. And that is my fact. So for round one, are we going to go with Dave's factoid fallacies? Laura's taste buds, location, location, location. Same or my zombie seat auto cannon. <laughs> right, who are we going with? Dave, who are you voting for? I'm going to vote for you. You have me a zombie. Yay. I love the fallacy of facts. So I'm going to go with factoid fabrications. I am not going to go for factoid fabrications because even though I really <laughs> like the idea and enjoy this and also am very proud of you talking about the whole autism thing, etc., um, I am now doubting every single fact that I have presented <laughs> on this show. <laughs> so. 
I, I had a feeling the second I contradicted you on one point, I was like, yeah, I've done that. Not going to win any rounds here. <laughs> so, therefore, I'm going to have to go for zombies, even though I'm finding it a bit cliche. Woo! I win that round. Yay, me. Still Woo. vaccinate you. Still Always vaccinate, you kids. vaccinate your kids.